The tragic play The Duchess of Malfi by English writer John Webster was first performed in 1612 and published in 1623. It is based on events that took place in the early years of the 16th century. It tells the story of a duchess who married outside of her social class in a love story that becomes a tragedy when her two brothers seek revenge. The play is a typical Elizabethan tragedy in which horror and violence are commonplace and is numbered among the greatest English Renaissance dramas. The Duchess of Malfi is set in Italy, for the most part at the palace of the Duchess in Malfi during the 16th century. The young duchess is a widow. Her brothers Ferdinand and the Cardinal are visiting her, and Antonio, who manages the household, has recently returned from France. In order to have a spy in place to report the Duchess's actions to the brothers after they leave, Ferdinand hires Bazola under the guise of having him tend to the Duchess's horses. The reason for putting Bazola in place is to assure that the Duchess remains celibate and does not get remarried. Bazola is not keen on the idea but agrees. Prior to leaving the Duchess to return to Rome the brothers remind her that it would be improper for her to remarry. She says she has no intention of doing so and resents their trying to control her. Secretly, however, she has a plan to marry Antonio. When she and Antonio soon wed, she tells him that she will be able to handle the situation with her brothers. Nine months after the first act, the Duchess is pregnant. Bazola suspects that she might be, and to determine for himself whether she is, he gives her apricots which were thought to be labor-inducing. When the Duchess takes them and falls ill, Antonio and Delio, a courtier, confer over how to keep her labor a secret. Bazola, meanwhile, feels he knows the truth and is further convinced when he finds a horoscope Antonio has prepared for the baby. Bazola sends a letter to Ferdinand and the cardinal telling them what he has learned. Both of the brothers are furious at the news, but unlike Ferdinand who is uncontrollably angry, the cardinal is able to approach it with a calm head. Not knowing that their sister is married, the brothers assume that the baby was born out of wedlock. Ferdinand decides to delay any further action until he learns the identity of the child's father. Two more years pass as the third act opens. The Duchess and Antonio have had two more children during this time. Ferdinand has returned to the Duchess's palace and Antonio and Delio guess that he somehow knows about the Duchess's children. Ferdinand bursts into the Duchess's bedroom. She informs him that she is married and his response is one of anger. He tells her that she should never let him know who her lover is or they will all be the recipient of his wrath. He then disowns her. In an effort to protect Antonio, she pretends that he has committed a theft. She banishes him from Alfie, sending him to Ancona. After he is gone, Bazola defends him to the Duchess which moves her to the point of sharing with Bazola the truth that they are secretly married. Bazola then pretends to be in support of the Duchess and she gives him money to bring to Antonio. He is to tell him that she will join him soon. The Cardinal finds them in Ancona a few days later and has the Duchess, along with her family, banished. As they are leaving Ancona, Bazola delivers to the Duchess a letter from Ferdinand, which he presents as one of forgiveness, even though it is actually a threat, which she suspects. She has Antonio and their oldest son go on separately. Shortly after they leave, Bazola and some soldiers take the Duchess and her other two children as prisoners and bring them back to the palace of the Duchess. As Act 4 opens, Ferdinand is angered to find that the Duchess is holding up well in imprisonment. In an attempt to break her, Ferdinand shows her wax corpses of her family members to convince her they are dead. Bazola tries to stop Ferdinand from torturing the Duchess, but to no avail. Bazola is sent to her disguised as a tomb maker to prepare her for death. Like other attempts, this too fails to affect her. She remains calm from the thought that she will now join her family members whom she presumes are dead. The executioners arrive with Bazola, strangle her. The killing of the Duchess is followed by those of her children and Cariola, her trusted lady in waiting. Upon seeing the body of his dead sister, Ferdinand is remorseful and blames Bazola for following his orders. Ferdinand begins to display signs of growing insanity. As the Duchess takes her final breath, Bazola tells her that Antonio is still alive. Antonio is unaware of the deaths of his wife and children as Act 5 commences. By this time, Ferdinand suffers from lycanthropy, believing himself to be a wolf. The Cardinal pretends to know nothing about the death of his sister and offers Bazola a reward to kill Antonio. Next, the Cardinal's mistress, Julia, tells Bazola that it is he that she loves and through her Bazola, 
is able to force the cardinal to admit his role in the murder of the duchess. The play ends with a series of events including the cardinal killing Julia, Bazola accidentally killing Antonio, Ferdinand stabbing the cardinal and Bazola, and Bazola killing Ferdinand. Just before he and the cardinal die, Bazola tells the attending courtiers all that has transpired. Delio and the courtiers vow to raise the only surviving member of the family, the eldest son, as a legacy to his parents who met with tragic ends. Related summaries, books by John Webster The White Devil. I hope you enjoy this video. Leave a like, if you didn't be sure to subscribe for more lore. Thank you all so much for your support.